Weird things you didn't know about the NBA. Do you know him? I bet you do. Now, let me tell you a story. Back in the day when I was out there slam dunking on the playground courts, there was this one tune that always had my back. Yep, you guessed it. Shaq Daddy himself dropped a rap hit that was practically the soundtrack to my b-ball adventures. It's one of those jams that just sticks with you, you know? I know some of you sing this track in your bathroom, but most of the NBA enthusiasts surely got shocked. So here we are with the weird things you didn't know about the NBA. Without any further ado, let's get started. Number 20, Muggsy Bogues, the tiniest guy in NBA history, and Manute Bull, a skyscraper on the court, once teamed up for the Washington Bullets. Muggsy could practically sneak between the player's legs, and Manute was like a human wall, blocking shots left and right. They were like the odd couple of basketball, but hey, they made it work. Number 19, and then there's Chris Webber, the hoop sensation from the Fab Five at Michigan. This guy was a double-double machine, but guess what? He never even played a single game for the team that drafted him, the Orlando Magic. Nope, they snagged him first overall in 93 and then quickly shipped him off to the Golden State Warriors for Penny Hardaway. Number 18. So LeBron James, the basketball legend, is a lefty when it comes to riding and munching on snacks. Yeah, you heard it right. Despite his hoop skills with his right hand, he's a southpaw for most daily stuff. Apparently, he wanted to copy his b-ball idols, Penny Hardaway and Michael Jordan, so he learned to shoot with his right hand. Could you imagine if he started sinking baskets with his left hand too? The court would be on fire! Number 17. Dave DeBusher is not just a basketball star, but also a pro baseball player. Move over, Deion Sanders! This guy spent some time tossing pitches for the Chicago White Sox. In two seasons, he racked up a record of three wins and four losses with a nifty ERA of 2.90. No wonder he stuck with basketball in the end. Number 16. Back in the day, the NBA wasn't too keen on Michael Jordan's snazzy Air Jordans. They were all like, hey, those shoes don't match your team's jerseys. But Mike was like, who cares? He rocked those black and red kicks, even though Commissioner Stern slapped him with a $5,000 fine for each game. Nike footed the bill, so Jordan just shrugged it off. Number 15. Kobe Bryant's middle name is Bean. Yep, you heard that right. I guess it's a nod to his dad, Joe Jellybean Bryant. Number 14. After hanging up their sneakers, 60% of NBA players end up broke within five years. It's like they're living the high life, splurging on houses, cars, and bling. But then poof, all that cash vanishes into thin air. LeBron James is one of the smart ones, though. He's got a team to handle his dough, showing that life after the NBA isn't just about shooting hoops. It's about making those dollars last longer than your highlight reel. Number 13. Wilt Chamberlain was once part of the Harlem Globetrotters crew. Yep, before he was slam dunking in the big leagues, he was goofing around with those dribbling wizards. His claim to fame? Tossing Captain Meadowlark Lemon up in the air like a pro and catching him like it was no big deal. They loved him so much that on March 9th, 2000, they were like, Wilt, you're so cool, we're retiring your number. How's that for a fun twist in his hoop history? Number 12. In all the history of the NBA, there's never been a quintuple double. Can you believe it? Quadruple doubles, sure, but quintuple? Nah. Only a handful of ballers like Alvin Robertson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and David Robinson have pulled off a quadruple double feat, racking up points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks like it's nobody's business. But scoring double digits in five different stats? Nope, hasn't happened yet. Number 11. Kobe Bryant didn't find love on a dating app. Nope, he met his wife Vanessa on the set of a rap video shoot. Kobe was taking a break from shooting hoops to drop some rhymes and met Vanessa while she's hanging out at the East Side of his video shoot. I guess you could say love was in the air, or maybe it was just the beats. Either way, who needs online dating when you can find your soulmate on a music video set? And Kobe's skills on the court might have been unmatched, but when it comes to music, well, let's just say the East Side has probably had the upper hand. Number 10. Shaq, the big cheese of the Orlando Magic back in 95, thinks he's the hottest thing on the court. But then here comes Hakeem Olajuwon, the NBA powerhouse, stealing Shaq's thunder left and right. Shaq's team might have made it to the championship game, but Hakeem was hogging all the limelight. Shaq's ego took a hit, big time. So what does he do? He pulls a classic move straight out of a middle school playground. He challenges Hakeem to a one-on-one -on -one showdown. Yeah, Shaq wasn't exactly the poster child for sportsmanship that day. 
Number nine. Turns out the basketball legend Vince Carter wasn't just a baller. He was a band geek too. Apparently in high school, he traded in his sneakers for a snazzy drum major uniform. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm having a hard time picturing Vince twirling a baton without cracking a smile. Number eight. Imagine a dude who's taller than your average skyscraper, armed with nothing but a spear, taking on a lion. Sounds like something straight out of a blockbuster movie, right? Well, apparently, that was just another day in the life of Minute Bull. This guy had stories to tell, and one of his favorites was about how he tangled with a lion and came out on top. Now that's what I call a tall tale, literally. Number seven. Back in 1962, a young Oscar Robertson was basically the triple-double king. He was tossing basketballs left and right, scoring 30.8 points, dishing out 11.4 assists, and snatching 12.5 rebounds per game. However, he was the assist champ that year, but somehow didn't nab the MVP trophy. Number 6. Now, let me introduce you to Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, the NBA's little big man. Standing at just 5 foot 3 inches, he made Shaq look like Burj Khalifa. But don't let his height fool you, Muggsy was a shot-blocking machine. He sent back 39 shots from those towering giants. It's like watching David taking on a bunch of Goliaths, but with more dribbling. Number 5. Bill Russell and the Celtics were almost unbeatable in the finals, except for that one time in 58. They faced off against the St. Louis Hawks, and, well, let's just say Russell's absence due to injury in Game 3 might have had something to do with their loss. Number 4. Paul Pierce was chilling at the Buzz Club, minding his own business, when suddenly, chaos erupts. He's caught in the middle of a brawl that ends up with 11 stab wounds. Yeah, 11. But guess what? Pierce doesn't let a few stab wounds slow him down. After some quick patching up, he's back on the court, shooting hoops like it's nobody's business. Who needs a superhero when you've got Paul Pierce? Number 3. Elvin Hayes, despite being a total baller with 12 All-Star games under his belt, a championship win, and averaging over 20 points per game for 10 out of his 16 NBA seasons, never snagged an MVP award. Like seriously? That's like being the coolest kid at school but never getting voted prom king. Number 2. Now let's talk about Shaq. This dude is a legend, right? Four-time NBA champ, 15-time All-Star, the whole shebang. But get this, out of the 22 times he tried to shoot a three-pointer, he only made one. Yup, just one. Shaq attempting a three-pointer is like seeing a giraffe trying to do ballet. It happened once, and it was, well, let's just say not graceful. Number one. And last but not least, there's Larry Brown. You know him as the coach who's been everywhere in the NBA, right? But did you know he also dabbed in college ball? Yeah, he coached at UCLA for a bit, even took them to the championship game in his first year, but they lost. And then, after some drama with ineligible players, his stint there got wiped from the history books. But he didn't give up. He later coached the Kansas Jayhawks, won a championship there, and then went on to snag an NBA championship with the Detroit Pistons. Now that's a comeback story. So that was just a taste of the wacky world of the NBA. Want more mind-blowing facts and quirky stories? Well, you're in luck. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our next video. Until next time, keep ballin' and stay raw.